All right guys, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use a debugger. So I'm gonna be showing it in PyCharm because that is what I use most frequently. But if you're using any other environment, um, especially if it's something like um, another JetBrains tool, like IntelliJ or something like that, it will work pretty much the same as this. Um, if you're using a different software like Eclipse or something like that, it won't be exactly the same, but the same concepts will be in place. So. Before we get into that, first let's figure out what our problem is. So I have this code, which is called checkerboard carol broken. So if I run this, right, what we want is we want to draw a checkerboard, right? And we all know what a checkerboard looks like. Basically, every other square is, you know, red or white and the other other squares are black in this case this is carol so every other square has a beeper and all the squares in between should not have a beeper and looking at this it looks fine so you might ask okay well why is this broken right so let's close this um and let's run another case where we run a seven by seven world and let's see if this works in that case and no, this does not work. So we ask ourselves, why might this not work, right? So let me reset the world and let me run it a little bit slower. And let's run the program again. So the first row looks fine. But what happens is when we went to the next row, we immediately put a beeper down on the first row. Um, we don't really, we don't really know what's going on. Let's not get into that right now. So let's, let's stop this and let's look at our code. So let's look at my code, right? I have a main function. I say while next, checker the row, and then I move to the next row. Um, and so it looks like maybe there might be a problem with my checker row function. So I'm gonna add a breakpoint right here. So you just, I literally just clicked right there and it added the dot. I can click and I can add more, but I don't need that many. And so once I've added these breakpoints, instead of clicking the play button here, all I have to do is click the little bug and I can do the same run program and it's gonna stop where I put my breakpoint. I can add multiple breakpoints if I want. Um, and so in this case, I don't think I need to. And so what I can do here is I can go step by step and you know, look at my code. One second, let me make this so that we can actually view everything. So right now I've stopped at put beeper, so I'm gonna run, okay. Right now I'm using this one, which is step over. So I'm stepping over because I don't want to dig into the details of how Carol puts down a beeper. I could do that if I wanted to, but I don't. So in this case, I'm just gonna step over. There's also a step into, and then there's a step into my code. So. What I would use most frequently is either this step over or I would use the step into my code. So I'll kind of demonstrate some of these a little bit later, but for now, let's just focus on solving the problem at hand. So I'm pushing the step over. So I put down a beeper as we can see, so that's fine. I said, while the front is clear, I'm gonna move one step. And then if the front is still clear, I'll move another step because I don't wanna put a beeper where I'm standing right now and it looks like that worked, and then I put down another beeper. So, so far this looks fine, right? But we already decided that the first row looked fine. So I checkered the row, I go into next equals move to next. Now I'm gonna actually go into here. So I'm gonna use the step into my code option to go inside of this move to next function. So I'm saying left equals facing east. So basically, Am I facing east? Yes, it's showing me right here that left is true. So I said, if left, then I need to turn left. Um, and I just use left as a flag to figure out which way I need to turn. Because for example, like I come here, then I go across. Once I get over here, I need to turn right to get to the next row. So that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Um, and I have a whole video on checkerboard Carol if you wanna check that one out. Um, but for now, I'm just showing you the debugger. So I said, okay, so I turned left. And then if the front is clear, because I don't want to run into the top once I've reached the top row, then I move. Um, if, you know, if the front was not clear, I return false. But anyway, so I say if left, then I need to turn left again. And then I return true. Okay, so it says I move to the next. So I was able to move to the next row successfully. So it looks like that part isn't causing a problem. So now I'm here. I'm here. I have checker row. So let me step into my code again. 
and I put down a beeper, but I didn't want to put down a beeper here, right? I don't want to put down a beeper until here. So I said, okay, well, it looks like this is the problem, right? When I call my checker row function, it's putting down the beeper immediately. But I only want to put down a beeper if I did not just put down a beeper. So one thing that I could do, which I think is actually what I will do, is I will use a flag, right? So this is going to be a little bit different than the way I did it before. So um, we put a start equals, actually, no, let me do it here. So let's say start equals true. And start is going to indicate whether the row should start with a beeper. And I'm going to pass start into my checker row function. And this way I can say basically if start put down a beeper. Otherwise, I need to move basically I need to move first and then put down a beeper. Right? Um, so now this should work, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit smart and I'm going to also add an if condition here um, just just to be on the safe side because there may be a situation where maybe this is only one column wide. And in that case, like if I tried to move, then it wouldn't work, right? So I'm just going to check and make sure that the front is clear before I move and put down a beeper. Now let's try this, right? Let's see if this works. We're going to just run it normally. That still didn't work. Now, why didn't this work? Let's turn our debugger back on, right? So let's go back into debug mode. And we run the program. We, let me move this over here. So I'm going to step over. Okay, so I said if start, put beeper. While front is clear, move. If front is clear, move. Blah, blah, blah. This all looks fine so far. Okay, so now I've checkered the row. I'm going to move. I'm going to check if I need to move to the next. Okay, I was able to move to the next. So I need to checker this row. So I'm stepping into my code and saying if start, put beeper. Now start is still true. But I already told myself that start is only supposed to be true if the row should start with a beeper. Now this row should not start with a beeper. So what is the problem? It looks like I didn't set start. So I'm thinking what I can do is after I checker the row, I can just reset start. So I'm going to add this here. So if start was true, then this should set start to false. That way, when I get to the next row, it should already be done. If start is not true, then it should set it to true. So let's try this again. So the debugger basically helped us figure out that the problem is that I never set my start to false, so I set it here. Um, another thing that you could do is you could set it inside this function, but then you would have to return it, and we just don't really want to do that. So let's try our debugger again, and let's run program. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click resume program because I know that there's no problem with the first row. I only care about the second row. And so because this breakpoint is here, when I click resume program, it's going to go all the way until it reaches the breakpoint again at checker row. So now we're here. So now it's telling me that start is false. So now we can check whether this behaves properly when start is false. So I said, okay, I went to the else. If front is clear, I move. Okay, I put down a beeper. Then I say, while front is clear, I move. If front is clear, I move again. I put down a beeper. Okay, this so far is looking good, right? Okay, yeah, that seemed to work. So I reset start. Now start is true again. Then I move to the next. And now if I go into checker row, which actually, since I have a breakpoint here, even if I step over, it will still go there. But if I did not have a breakpoint, I would have needed to use the step into my code to get here. So I said, okay, if start, start is true. We're just going to double check this again. I put down the beeper. This is the same as the first row, so I don't expect any problems here. And yeah, this looks pretty good. Cool. Okay, so now let's resume. I'm going to do one row at a time. I'm just going to keep clicking resume. 
And yeah, this is looking good. So I'm actually gonna remove the breakpoint and then I'm gonna click resume and this should finish out the rest of the program. And this looks like a solid checkerboard. So now we've made some changes. So it is generally a good idea to go back and you know rerun our other case. So I'm going to stop this and I'm going to run again with the eight by eight world and I'm gonna run the program, let's go fast. And there's a problem. What is the problem? The problem is that we said, okay, this row should start with a beeper, but now we shouldn't start with a beeper. But I'm saying it shouldn't start with a beeper, but this is still kind of, you know, not really working because now every, this row is starting with a beeper, this row is not starting with a beeper. So it's still drawing vertical lines and this is why we have to check. So now let's go back to our debugger. What could be the problem? Now, we have an idea. We already figured out that our start was a problem. So let's look at this again. So what could we do in this case to adjust start? Um, let's come here. Let's go back into our debugger. And let's run the program. Let's go, go, go. We already saw that the first row was correct. And I think what we want to know is what's going on with the second row. So we reset start to not start because we're thinking every other row should not start with a beeper. Now, I think that would work if we were going back all the way left and doing each row at a time, then what we have would probably work. But since we are kind of alternating directions, it doesn't really work. So what we need to know is not alternating the rows in terms of start and not start. What we need to do is say, okay, if this row ended with a beeper, then I should um, basically start the next row without a beeper. So what I'm going to do is instead of this, I'm actually going to do this start equals checker row start, and I'm going to modify it in this function. So I'm going to leave all this the same, but I'm going to reset start here. So what I want to know is if the front is not clear, that means I ran into a wall. Hmm. Let me think about this. So if start, I put a beeper. Okay. That would be the first one. Then else. Okay. So else is the second row. So we're saying, so, okay. Else would be the second row. I said, if the front is clear, I move. And then I put a beeper which is not what I want to do. So here I need start to be true actually is what I want. Right where I'm standing, I want start to be true. So how could I have made start true at this stage? So let's let's re-simulate the first row. So in the first row, start would have been true. So I would have put down a beeper and then I would have said, while the front is clear, I would have moved. And then if front is clear. So I think what I need to do here is, so this is saying I move, I moved one step. So like in this case, I would have moved one step. Then I would have said, if the front is clear, then move another step and put a beeper. But the front would not have been clear at the end of the row. So I think at this case, if the front was not clear, I think that's when I need to return um, true. And I'm returning true. Um, next row needs to start with beeper since this row did not end in beeper. Okay, so let's recap this, right? So when I'm here, I would have come to the start. I said, okay, start is true. I put down a beeper. Then I said, while front is clear, I moved a step. I said, if the front is still clear, move a step and put down a beeper. Then I said, okay, I'm going back to the beginning of my while loop. The front is still clear, so I move a step. If the front is still clear, move a step, put down a beeper, and, you know, continue, continue. So here is basically line 24. I put down the beeper. Now, after this, I go back to the beginning of my while loop. I move a step. Then I say, is the front clear? Then I say no. So what I know is after I move this first step, if the front is not clear, that's when I know that I did not end on a beeper. If I had ended on a beeper, I would have reached this, this phase here. 
But since I didn't, I know I need to do this. So what I'm going to do is, and then at the end of this, um, one second. At the end of this, after all of this is true, I'm going to return false, which basically is going to say that the next row. So if I got if I got to here without returning true, then that means I must have just put down a beeper. And so then I should return false to say that the next row does not need to start with a beeper. So let's try this again, right? Let's just run normally just to see, run program. Okay, this eight by eight looks fine. Okay, let's try the seven by seven again. Let's run fast. And this looks fine too. So it looks like we have succeeded. So just to recap the debugger, in order to use the debugger, one of the first things you need to do is to add a breakpoint. I added breakpoint on the checker row function because that's the one that was problematic. Um, you can add multiple breakpoints. For example, I could have another one here if I wanted to. I could have another one here. I can put them wherever I choose to. Once I have my breakpoints, instead of starting with the normal run button, I start with the debug menu. And then once I'm in the debug menu, then I use the step over. Step over is going to step over any type of function calls. So let me just show you guys what the step into does. So if I call the raw step into, it's gonna take me into this Carol application code. And sometimes you wanna do that, but generally speaking, you really don't wanna find yourself inside of all this library code. So I typically never use this step into function. I pretty much stick to either step over or step into my code, depending on what I need to do. You can step out if you do find yourself in a place you don't want to be in. There's also a run to cursor, which I've never used to this, but seems like it could be useful. Um, and, you know, some other stuff. So that's pretty much the debugger. Um, if you are somewhere and you want to get to the next breakpoint, like for example, you know that there's always a problem on the third iteration of a loop or something like that, you can just keep clicking, you know, run to the next breakpoint and you know this is kind of what you can do to do that if you decide you are done and you want to you know just skip the rest of the breakpoints you can remove all these breakpoints anytime I can run to the next breakpoint but I didn't delete this one so now if I delete this one and I run again then it should finish the program because at this point I don't have any more breakpoints. So that's pretty much the summary of how you use the debugger. It is very, very helpful when you're dealing with any type of coding activities. A lot of the time I find myself, if I'm solving something like on leak code or something like that, I will literally copy and paste my code into PyCharm just so that I can use the debugger because trying to debug without a debugger is very, very difficult. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.